Yeah, hi everyone. So first of all, let me thank uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, our work on the non-perturbative determination of the collision and broadening kernel and how we use it to compute uh, medium-induced radiation in QCD plasma. So, <clears throat> as a motivation for this work, I'd like to talk about uh, first of all how energy loss so <clears throat> lately it has been shown that the medium energy loss of a hard, hard parton is dominated by this inverse energy cascade which is driven by this in medium splittings that lead to this energy cascade of a successive multiple splittings where the hard parton as it enters the medium it loses its energy and is dumped into this cascade that leads the energy all the way to the medium. And so to, to understand this energy loss of a hard parton in the medium, one requires a good understanding of the, the in-medium splittings. And this is the purpose of this work is to try to get a better understanding of the in-medium splittings. So as we know, as the high energetic partons traverses the medium they can lose their energy mainly due to two processes so historically first it was computed the elastic energy loss which is mainly due to elastic interactions with the medium but later on it was shown that due to the multiple soft scattering with the medium this can lead the hard parton to radiate and this is what leads to this cascade <clears throat> which dominates the energy loss for a very high energetic parton. Both these processes require an understanding of the medium and require the modeling of the medium, which usually comes from what we call the transfer scattering rate, which is the elastic scattering rate for a very large energetic parton, which gives this C of Q curve that we call the broadening kernel as a function of the momentum exchange Q curve, the transverse momentum exchange Q curve. And in the literature, one usually employs the perturbative methods to obtain this broadening kernel coupled with the description of the medium. So either if we describe the medium as static screen color center, then you can <clears throat> obtain this Yukawa type potential or if we describe the medium as dynamic and moving charges using the HTL theory, we can we end up with this device screen potential. Then in the very high energetic limit, where you consider mostly multiple soft scattering, this potential, these potentials become in the after Fourier transformation, this B squared behavior with Q hat that lead to a broadening and which gives a harmonic oscillator type equation for the in medium splitting that can be solved. <clears throat> However, due to the infamous infrared problem of a finite temperature QCD, we know that uh, perturbative calculations can receive a large non-perturbative uh, contributions. And this is even at small coupling. So, <clears throat> Uh, and so to remedy this, uh, after writing the Fourier uh, transform here, I define off the C of Q curve, which is the zero subtracted uh, Fourier transform into impact parameter space. Uh, this collision kernel can then be defined in terms of uh, the behavior of certain light like whistle loops. And for temperatures well up of the critical temperature, these whistle loops can be recast into a reduced effective theory of QCD, which is known as electrostatic QCD, where we use the separation of scales between the GT and the hard scale by T of the Matsubara frequencies to integrate out the hard modes and this lead, leaves only the blue on zero mode which also leads to a reduced theory, dimensionally reduced theory of QCD. So it's in a three dimension instead of four dimensions. <clears throat> and the kernel then can be computed 
in a perturbative expansion, but now in the EQCD theory and the leading order and next to leader order corrections were obtained. So for the leading order, the kernel is very similar to the QCD kernel with D by screen potential with the prefactor that depends on Q perp. But overall, it's very similar to the QCD kernel in its behavior in the perturbative behavior. However, the next to leading order corrections, which were obtained here by Kakao display a very markedly different behavior at small momentum exchange, which go as one over Q to the tree, as a, opposed to the leading order, which is only one over Q squared. And on the other hand, at large momentum exchange, we recover the same behavior. So this difference here that we see even at small coupling maybe hints at a breakdown of this perturbative expansion. And so one can try to go beyond the perturbative results to extract non-perturbative contributions on the lattice, which was done by these papers. And in 2020, Igaimura and Nishvusa obtained the continuum extrapolated results for the broadening kernel in EQCD on a lattice. However, this result here I take from their paper is for the broadening kernel in EQCD, which is not exactly the broadening kernel in QCD. That's because EQCD is a low energy effective theory of QCD, which means they, they agree both in the infrared regime, but in the ultraviolet, they can be different. And so we need to employ a matching to extract the infrared behavior from the lattice and supply it with the right ultraviolet behavior that we know from perturbative QCD. And that's what we do here to obtain the fully matched uh, broadening kernel results here for 500 MeV temperature in, in this black dots and 250 MeV in orange that I plot here as a function of the impact parameter. And what we see is when we do the scaling with the coupling and the temperature, we see that both results show very similar behavior and they scale on top of each other <coughs> with this nice scale. Oh. Now, before I talk about the, the perturbative results, I I discuss here the different limiting behaviors of the kernel. So in the long distance, we have this behavior that was shown for EQCD, which, which is that the kernel follows this area low behavior with a string tension as the slope, with, <coughs> which describes this uh, long distance behavior. And then in the short distance, which, which is the infrared in a momentum space, the kernel is then matched to the leading order, which goes as this B squared log B behavior, and then plus a B squared term, which, which has this Q hat zero, which determines the scale are we, at which we do the matching. So here. <coughs> and so using these uh, different behaviors, we, we construct splines for the different data points. So here we have in blue for 500 MeV, this top line, and then purple for 250, which, which give very similar behavior, except here at long distance where they have a slightly different string tension due to these different data point errors. And now we can compare this with the non-perturbative results that were obtained before. So we have the next to leading order in green here and the leading order in orange. So in the long distance, we see that we have a, also in the next to leading order, we have this string tension area low behavior, but it comes with a different slope. So meaning a different string tension, while the leading order has only this logarithmic behavior. And then in the short distance where we do the matching to QCD, we recover the same behavior here at the short distances. Yeah. 
And now, and now to compute the in medium splitting rates, we it is best to work in momentum space. So we Fourier transform back this kernel that we obtained in impact parameter space to to momentum space. And here I show again the same results. I compare the non-perturbative ones with the perturbative kernels. And so in the different limits, so in the UV, we have here this one over Q to the four hard tail behavior that is recovered by all the different rates, which is this behavior here in the UV. And then in the infrared, we have this one over Q to the three behavior similar to the next leading order, which comes with the string tension that you see here, but comes with a different string tension. So then the next leading order, so we have a different here, prefactor. And then on the other hand, the leading order only comes with this one over Q squared behavior. And now that we have the different broadening kernels, we can use them to compute the rate of uh, it's split in infinite medium. We follow the approach of Kao and Gale, and we obtain the rate of a quark with energy 300 times the temperature radiating a gluon with momentum fraction Z. And here on the left, I show for a, <clears throat> for a soft gluon with momentum fraction of 0 0.05, and then on the right uh, with the democratic splitting of the momentum fraction of half. And we look at the splitting rate here as a function of the evolution time. So the time uh, the parton spends in the medium. <laughs> and what we see is that at short times, the next to lead, the non-perturbative results actually start slower than the leading order results before it, it saturates in between the leading order and next to leading order, which we see at the different uh, uh, momentum fractions. So we see similar behavior. And if we compare the ratio to the leading order, what we see is that the non-perturbative results start, uh, stays in a band around the 50% of the <coughs> leading order, while the next to leading order can sometimes go to become large as uh, twice as large as the leading order. And we see that the leading order actually stays closer to the non-perturbative result. And we can also look at the splitting rate as a function of momentum fraction for this momentum fraction of the gluon at different times here at 0 0.4 Fermi and in the middle at one Fermi and then at four Fermi on the right. And and we see a quali qualitatively similar behavior for all the different momentum fractions. And only the saturation time is, is, is different. And so we see that the non perturbative results are slower than the leading order before it slowly saturates in between the leading order and next to leading order. Now, beyond just using different uh, kernels to compute the in-medium splitting rates. We also use different approximation. We try to compare different approximations to obtaining this in-medium splitting rates. And uh, I will try to introduce them here by explaining the interplay between the different scales of this, this splitting. So if we think of a quark, uh, radiating the gluon here in the medium, we have dif different scales that enter from the medium length here L, so the time the parton spends in the medium, to the mean free path, which is the, <laughs> the distance between each uh, elastic scattering in the medium. And then because of the quantum mechanical effect, uh, there is a, a finite time it takes for the medium to discern between the quark and the radiated gluon and this is known as the formation time so time takes for this radiation to to form 
and so we can <laughs> we can differentiate between different uh, different regimes so if we first consider a soft splitting so with the typical uh, momentum fraction to be small then the formation time is is then shorter than the mean free path such that the formation time is shorter than the mean free path and then only few scatterings can occur during the formation and so the radiation can be described using an opacity expansion which is an expansion in the number of scatterings and and this is known as the beta heidler regimes where the first opacity expansion is known as the beta heidler rate and on the other hand if we consider a hard splitting then we have two different cases either if the formation time is much larger than the medium length and then the, these kind of gluons can only be formed due due to rare hard scattering since the soft scattering that, uh, that usually give a transverse momentum of q hat times the formation time are, are not large enough to to obtain these gluons and then these can again be described in an opacity expansion way uh, and then on the other hand if the formation time is smaller than me medium length then multiple scatterings are important and have to be resumed which lead to interference effects and lead to this uh, lpm effect and so these different regimes that can be described with different approximations that people have been working on so here we will compare between uh, three different approximations so first we will compute the opacity expansion in the first order which is uh, by considering only one scattering and then we will also compare with, with this what we call a resumed opacity expansion that has been developed lately in the literature where we take the opacity expansion and by employing a cutoff to the collision integral, you can actually uh, resum this opacity expansion the different terms, and it leads to this exponential, it exponentiates, which leads to this exponential attenuation term. And then on the other hand, if we look for a hard, a very hard the parton and the <coughs> Rodney kernel has this behavior of p squared log b behavior and this can be can be described using the harmonic oscillator approximation if we take the log to be to be a constant and so this can this can lead to a harmonic oscillator equation for the for solving for the in medium splitting which can be solved completely analytically and then there have been work to improve this this using an opacity expansion for the log b behavior so the the term where the the log depends on on the impact parameter and so by considering this term to be a perturbation on top of the harmonic oscillator and solving this perturbation in opacity expansion and so this can be understood as resumming the multiple soft scattering in the harmonic oscillator limit and then considering the rare hard scatterings in an opacity expansion on top of this multiple soft soft scatterings and then so here we co compute again the same splitting rate for a quark with the energy 300 times the temperature splitting into a gluon with momentum fraction z and we use the same broadening kernel, mainly the, this non perturbative broadening kernel at 500 MeV, but we co compare the full uh, uh, in medium splitting to the different approximations that I just discussed. So we compare with the opacity expansion at first order in orange, and then this n equal x, x which is this resumed opacity expansion. And then this. Uh, uh, 
next to leading order harmonic oscillator approximations where the rare hard scatterings are considered on, on top of the multiple soft scatterings. And so what we see is that for both the momentum fraction at early times, the opacity expansion works very nice, works well to describe the rate. <laughs> However, the this opacity expansion very fast saturates at a much larger than the full rate. But on the other hand, uh, for a soft splitting, this resumed opacity expansion is uh, attenuated and it saturates much closer to the full rate. We, yeah, uh, in for a soft splitting, while for a hard splitting, it can be different since since there we have this multiple soft scatterings that are important and and here for this multiple soft scatterings we, the harmonic oscillator works very well and can describe the rate and even at early times since it considers this opacity expansion of the rare hard scatterings okay and before concluding i just so today I was talking about the collisional kernel that was obtained in this latest EQCD result used in the Wilson loops, but there have been also work to ob obtain the asymptotic masses because for now we were using the leading order for the result for the asymptotic mass, but there have been work to obtain it, the asymptotic mass using the same method. And so finally to conclude, I showed how approximations to the splitting rates can be effective at reproducing the, the, rate, the rate at within their respective range of validity. However, this, on the other hand, the differences between the, the kernel, so the perturbative kernel, mainly the leading order, which is usually used in phenomenological studies for jet quenching, and the non perturbative kernel can easily be of the order of 30% and can have larger uh, differences. And so it would be interesting to include this non perturbative results to JET studies to see their impact on the JET quenching studies. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the interesting results. We have time for a few questions. Questions in the room or questions on Zoom? Yes, the one in the back. Yeah, thanks for the interesting talk. So, um, so do I understand correctly that strictly speaking, the non participative result for the collision kernel is only valid at very high temperature because you're assuming that EQCD is the correct description, is the correct effective theory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this should work only at, but EQCD has surprisingly has been shown to work at close to the critical temperature. But what do you mean by that? I mean, for the thermodynamic quantities it works at around two times the critical temperature okay thank you okay any further questions either in the room or questions on zoom all right seems not to be the case um let's thank ismail again